I think I've figured it out. I mean, look at this. You're looking at me now. And then, and then if, if I go, I go to, to do something, something over, over here, here. Maybe come over here. And we're all the way back. And then if I want to get up. You know, I'm not afraid to admit when I have a problem, but I very much do have a problem. The thing about revamping my studio over and over is that I often don't know when to stop. The goal is to keep tweaking it to best serve my needs, of course. I can't be stagnant, not me. But that doesn't mean my ambitions don't get the best of me. Take my last setup video, for instance. It was a lot of fun finally achieving the multicam setup I had always wanted, but I even ended it saying I had no idea how to control it. Hire someone? Too easy. Plus, I'm, I'm not afraid to admit that my budget doesn't really have the room for that. And there's the issue of trust. Technology always finds a way, however. After the latest round of renovations, I had to move some of my bird dog gear. They really do make the best broadcast gear for NDI workflows, and they've suited my work perfectly. The overhead cams get near daily use, and the PTZ ones just add a certain layer of magic. So then, how are we mounting this stuff safely to the ceiling? One of these, a wall plate with baby receiver. It sounds and looks as boring as it gets. Box you pick up from your old B and H. I always have a few of these kinds of grip things lying around for projects like this. And it's about as dead simple as it gets. It's literally a metal plate with a receiver in that you can then put in stuff for mounting things. You've got eight different mounting hole options, and I'm using it right now for our overhead camera here, which actually has an entire a motorized slider plus a box cam mounted to it. So that's all it comes with. You'll need your own screwing hardware, and I recommend a stud finder because especially when putting this in the ceiling, you do not want to rely on anchors. Drywall anchors are crap, even when you get really good ones. This baby is either going in a stud for at least half of the screws, if not more, or we're using uh, butterfly anchors, which I have to go get out of the workshop. We pulled all this out of my workshop, which is nowhere near finished because it got winter before I could finish it, so. That is not coming out. So then you might be asking, how are you gonna hang all of those things at once? That is just one mount point. Are you gonna go through and mount all of those? No, that's a nightmare. I hate doing it. I got the one point up, up there for contact and it's not going anywhere. For that, we're using this. This is a triple baby receiver. So that's the baby plate with the receiver. This is the baby triple header that <laughs> takes that one and splits it to three. I honestly didn't expect it to be so long. This box is fairly massive, but it should be perfect to go right above this workbench and do what I need. And should, the reason I'm comfortable making this decision, this is something that should I reconfigure everything again, having that mount point with a triple stack uh, mounting option is something that I can use pretty much no matter what purpose these chunks of the studio is for. Now it's mounted tightly enough in there that I'm probably never taking it down. But hey, that'll be the problem of whoever buys this house after me. All right, this is actually potentially better than I expected. It's called a triple head, but it actually has two on these ends in the one. So it will mount up into the receiver and I won't really be able to put any actual clamps on these baby pins, but I could potentially use other additional clamps to hang off of them to then drop down. So this would go up in the plate, probably camera center, light off to the side, projector, projector camera. See, that's what I'm trying to figure out because I, I, I have the dilemma Obviously, my overhead camera should be facing in the center, but if I'm projecting down, I also need that to go in the center. I've placed every camera with purpose, chosen the angles carefully, but that's not enough. 
Chat is tired of reminding me to switch basic camera angles. I need a solution. I think I've figured it out. I mean, look at this. You're looking at me now. And then, and then if, if I go, I go to, to do something, something over, over here, here. Maybe come over here. And we're all the way back. And then if I want to get up. Computer vision has come a long way in the past few years. And with it has the hardware consumers need to run it. Is it expensive? Okay, sure. But when you're doing as much as I do, it tends to be worth it. This is incredible! What? The beefy RTX 4090 graphics card in my primary workstation now serves yet another purpose on top of all the rest. Analyzing a webcam's video feed to track my face and determine where I am in the frame and which direction I am looking in. This allows the new program Your Director AI to switch scenes in OBS and automatically change some of my camera angles for me. This changes everything. The evolution of the multicam setup in this video has been great for the main line of cameras, and this isn't all the extended stuff. I have obviously my primary desktop tutorial camera. I have my PTZ camera way over there that I can zoom in and out with. I have my entire art setup that I could run over to. It's really lagging for some reason. I don't exactly know why. I've got my test bench with the Insta360 link auto-tracking me. I've got the overhead and all this stuff coming from my glitch art rig. I have the bird dog, uh, the, the box camera, the PF100 over top my toolbox, which is kind of my art station at the moment. We've got a webcam over here. I got a lot of stuff going. That's a lot of buttons to press. That's where this little program right here comes in. So this is the UI for your director AI. I do want to note real quick that in the setup for this and all of that, they ask you to make an account and you have to buy it for free. And there's there's just a couple little red flags that make me think that this is one of those things because I've gotten caught in covering them before that is kind of bait to later turn into a paid product. And so I apologize if this becomes a paid thing later and you don't have access to it or something. I can't control that. But for a first start on this, this is actually pretty cool. So this uses computer vision AI to detect your face. And so what I have done here is I have added my Razer Keo Pro that I just have mounted off to the left. You could use any camera that you have connected to your computer or through NDI. And it is analyzing for my eyebrows, my eyes, my nose, my mouth, trying to find where my face is and determine the angle for that. And you can actually fine tune the position of where the camera is in relation to you as well to make it easier for it to know like where your angle of your face is supposed to be. So I technically have this added through NDI because I also have a scene in my OBS where this camera is added and I don't want to mess with that. And so for that, I have the latest NDI plugin built for OBS 28 and newer already installed. I have a link to that in the description. And then just under filters, I have the dedicated NDI output filter. And then I added it as an NDI source here. Then you choose how far you are from the camera. I am very close, so close and then give it a sec to, you know, hit start, stop, give it a sec to track your face and it will start deciding where you are. And it can start, you can see here, it knows that it should be switching cameras, but they thankfully added a hotkey to allow you to have some manual control over that. So this connects with WebSockets 4.9.1. So you will need to install that compatibility plugin for OBS 28 and newer as well. Set it up, put in your password, hit connect, and then it will allow you to select up to four scenes based on where you are. So you have facing the camera, you have to the left of the camera, to the right of the camera, and then when you're just completely off scene. And I can demo that real quick here. If I disable the auto tracking, the hotkey detection for that is not great, honestly. I kind of have to hold it for a second. Well, I have it assigned to a Stream Deck pedal button. I don't think it works when the app is actually in the... Yeah, that, that's what it is. It doesn't work when the app is actually in the foreground. Well, there we go. All right. So I'm looking at my main camera, which is technically to the right of the camera that's tracking. And you can jump between them. You don't have to reconnect back to it. So I can go from here to... And it'll connect, which is really freaking cool. And again, if I just get up and walk around... And we're back. So you will, it will automatically update the scene list based on your WebSockets reported scenes in OBS here. 
You do have, again, that hotkey to block or unblock the auto switching, which is really handy. For future updates, I would love to see them give options, like more control over what you can actually do with the web sockets. So for example, control multiple multiple sources within a scene rather than switching scenes entirely, because that's something I would want to do with like nested scenes and stuff, just to help make it more secure when I'm controlling things. Then you can also set a delay for how long it takes to switch. So I've had it on zero, but if I set it all the way up to 10, I think it's in milliseconds. So really the delay doesn't do much, but it kind of helps catch you, I guess, because if I go like this, well, that was still quick enough that it yeah, that way if you like, just kind of look over but you don't want it to fully switch, you can kind of catch yourself, whereas if I do this, well, eh, it's a delay. There's a tally light option, but there's no, I guess this would trigger the NDI ta tally, uh, which some NDI cams support and things like that. I don't really have anything to offer in that regard. And then you can fine tune your CPU and GPU usage, which frankly, they didn't have much on the site. I don't exactly know what that does. I can crank it up. I don't think it's gonna affect anything. I don't think it's like impacting my frame rate or anything on a 4090 doing nothing else. When you're gaming, when you're doing other forms of live streaming, maybe it'll have an impact, I don't know. So the really cool thing about this is that you don't have to use a camera that you show on screen. And you might be thinking, well, what's the point in that? Well, first and foremost, if you want something that's more unified so you can get your positioning right and you don't wanna deal with NDI or something, you can just strap a really crappy little webcam on top of your main camera and use that instead. But that also means that you can run it on a secondary computer because it's using WebSockets. WebSockets controls OBS through the web or at least through your local network if you want. So you could run it on a dedicated machine if the CPU and GPU usage is too much for you. You could also set it up in a scenario where say you're cooking and you wanna have a camera mounted above your stove or something so that when you are literally cooking, it knows that you're facing that and just switches to the overhead view or like chopping or something like that. But then when you look back over and you actually want to talk to the camera, it switches to that view or shout out to my buddy Sir Crest for this one. If you are painting and you have an easel set up, when you are actually facing the painting, you could have a camera near or behind the easel. When you're actually facing the painting and doing the painting, it would switch to kind of the back view or the easel view, the art view, like the, the, this setup that I have, if I switch to this one, if it switched to that view because I have a camera that's facing the workbench, that would be really sick because it would just automatically switch to that overhead view. And then whenever I look over at my chat monitor or something, it switches back to this view. Or for game streamers who have the, 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 the side on view and they don't like having that awkward angle while they're gaming, like th there are some game streamers that will effectively like only want to have their camera up when they're talking to chat or something like that. You could have it so that when you look at your chat, which is off over here, it pulls up your camera. Even if it's just in the overlay, it pulls up your camera and shows you on screen. And then you go back to not having it or something like that. Like, especially if they give you more source control in the settings and things like that. There's like a ton you could do here. And it is so exciting. I hope they keep developing it. I hope they have more features that they can implement. Uh, they do have a forum that isn't used yet uh, on their website that you could go request features and things like that. So I guess that would be the place to put those. But I am so excited for this. I don't know what drawer this went in. I have so many ongoing projects. It is... Mm. So pair this with something like the Twiddler, which is what I was trying to use in the first place. It connects over Bluetooth and is like a little... The way you're supposed to use it really doesn't make sense to me. There we go. It's basically like a Wiimote or a PlayStation Move controller. We have a bunch of different hotkeys. Remap the hotkeys to both blocking and unblocking the auto, you know, scene selector in the first place, as well as the manual scenes you want to switch to. You now have ultimate control. I am so freaking stoked. I can actually get up and just walk around. I can just get up and walk around my studio. Like I can just do stuff. And plus I have two of those cameras. I could 
basically have it switch to the scene with those two cameras and then use this to switch between which camera is actually displayed based on what I know that I'm walking around to just subtly as I'm moving around. Th my streams and the things I can do in videos soon are gonna get wild. And there is an audio component to fixing this too that we're gonna cover in a future video. This was an exciting step, but just the first step of many to overhaul my studio and make it get out of my way for 2023. Uh, to see the rest of the progress I've been making, you can head over to the full overhaul studio tour video uh, with the extended cut over on Nebula. There are lots more juicy details there and more just kind of therapeutic you know, time-lapse footage and things like that. After that, you can catch up on my Nebula original documentary series, Print Screen, as episode three is releasing very soon. Print Screen is my retrospective documentary series diving into the history of YouTubing, content creation, independent live streaming, fro focused on the fun bits of the, the little things that built up to us being able to do what we do, for example, here on YouTube. Such as episode three is about handheld cameras for game consoles like the Game Boy camera. Episode two was about webcams and the innovation of that and how Apple really changed the world with photo booth. And episode one was all about camcorders and th those little forgotten relics that really made everything possible. We've got a few more episodes coming after episode three, but make sure you get caught up with the first couple episodes before episode three rolls out. Nebula is my own video streaming service, a creator-built, creator-owned platform where we can experiment more with content that doesn't do well on YouTube. I've been making a lot of shifts uh, in my content to improve the YouTube performance of it, which is working, but it means that I'm leaving out some of the, the fun bits that I don't want you to miss, that I don't want to leave out. Those are available in the extended cuts or in the exclusive videos over on Nebula. If you sign up with my link, you not only get access to all of that exclusive ad-free content from myself and all Nebula creators, but you also get access to Nebula classes for free bundled in as well, where our creators host classes on how to be a creator or among other things that you can learn from Nebula creators like Foreign teaching how to tell stories or Patrick Willems on showing how he makes movies on a budget and on what was supposed to be limited time. I guess it ended up not being limited time. Your favorite creators teaching you how they create. Perfect for those wanting to get into the craft or just wanting to peek behind the curtain. If you sign up for Nebula using the link below, you can get access for a little over $2.50 per month or just $30 per year. With my link, you get access to all of the great stuff Nebula offers, plus Nebula classes with a good chunk going straight to supporting me right away. Don't miss out on the exclusive content. It may not be perfect, but it's mine. It's yet another tool in my arsenal that allows me, now em em empowers me to continue pushing the envelope of what I can film in this studio. That's a goal that I will never stop pursuing. Nothing will keep me away from achieving my vision. Remember to be kind, rewind.